Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy, worthy, for he is good, yes, he is good. For he is worthy. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Amani Temple of Temecula Church of God in Christ Power for Living Sunday School class. Your teacher today is myself, Elder Madison Farrar. And uh, we just thank you and welcome you all for being here on today. Our fall topic today is God's exceptional choice. And for the month of November, the theme is we are God's God picked you. And we're in the New Testament, uh, chapter one, so again, be in Ephesians on today. As to Ephesians, have your pen or pencil to take some proving that those. Our key text is today, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. And that's found in Ephesians 1 and 3 on today. So we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer on this morning. Father, we thank you on this morning for your goodness and your mercy unto us. We thank you, God, for each and every one that is attending this class, in class, on the social media, and those that will join in later on to watch. We pray, oh God, that you would bless. We pray that you would encourage the people of God everywhere, Lord. Just in encourage your people of God in the name of Jesus and let them know that you are there for them and they we pray that you would bless the word of God unto us in Jesus name we pray thank God amen well, Ephesians and uh, we're going to be in the book the first book of Ephesians uh, chapter one and um, starting at verse one on today so again, if you're just joining us, welcome and thanks for joining us. We're going to talk about God picked you. Again, God picked you. And so um, God picked you and we are God's artwork. And so it's how do you see yourself on today? Once you're saved, you're in a right relationship with God. And so God sees us in a different light than the world sees us. So God sees us as redeemed, as chosen, without blame. We're forgiven. God sees us as holy and guiltless on today. So just think a minute about a moment about your own life. And again, um, would the world, if they looked at your lifestyle, consider you 
as being blameless and forgiven and holy on today. And so again, how do you see yourself on today? We want you to get to the place where you see yourself as God sees you. And God sees you once you're in right relationship with God, he sees you differently than the world sees you. Or it's not a feeling based on a feeling, how you feel, it's how God sees us. And again, God sees us if we're in right relationship with him on this morning, God sees sees us as redeemed, holy, chosen, without blame, and forgiven. So again, we're talking about God picked you. If you're just joining us again, we're in the book of Ephesians chapter one. And um, we're talking about today, God. We're talking about the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. We're talking about the God of all flesh, the God of creation, uh, where there's nothing too hard for him. We're not talking about the gods, the little G-O-Ds that people make and carry around, that dust them off, that uh, fix them when they're broken, that carry them around. We're talking about the God that carries us around. Amen. And so God picked us and picked has to do with being chosen or selected. So God, how awesome is that? That out of millions and billions of people throughout all the land, God selected you to be uh, one of his. And so we're gonna look at what that means uh, uh, to be chosen and to be elected by God. And again, how awesome is that? To the almighty God of the universe has chosen you. So again, we're going to go ahead and start to read our scripture for today. Again, we are in Ephesians chapter one. Thank you, everyone that is here in attendance and in the media. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints which are at Ephesus and to the faithful in Christ Jesus, grace be to you, verse 2, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he has chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he had made us accepted in the beloved. Verse 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he had abounded to us toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. Verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Verse 12, that we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ. 13, in whom he also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Last verse, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Amen. Thank God for the reading of his word. It's a mouthful on today. I just want to make sure that you pick up some nuggets on today that you can uh, keep with you throughout the week. Remember again to, if you can, to take a note or two to remind you to retain 
uh, what you have heard. And again, I repeat for those who are just coming on or in class, when you take notes when someone is teaching or preaching, you will get more out of and your brain will remember more than if you just listen. So it's just another step in um, uh, uh, just remembering and pondering on the word of God. And so faith comes, the Bible says, by hearing, hearing by the word of God. But if you're writing it and taking it notes, then your brain is doing more and it's retaining more. All right, let's go into the lesson and see what's going on. So again, God picked you on today. I want you to think about that and believe what God thinks about you. Again, that you are, if any man be in Christ Jesus, the Bible says he he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And that's why God sees us differently than we may view ourselves or way the world views us. So again, God views us as his chosen vessel. Set aside. We are now set aside for kingdom use. He sees us as blameless. He sees us as holy and right and right standing with God him. So again, we thank God. Our background scripture in Acts 19 is in regards to those who are accepted and those who disbelieve or those who reject God. So those who reject God, this lesson, um, is they are not God picked. And we will talk about that more when we get to predestinate what that means. But um, we are talking again about those who accept and believe the truth of the word of God. So we don't really believe in predestination as some people do where God has chosen some to be saved and then God has left the rest to be condemned. We don't believe in that because we know just because God is omniscient, the Bible says, he knows everything. Revelations 1 and 8 says he's Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is, which was, and which is to come, the Almighty. So if he was and is and is to become, that's why he knows everything that's going on, who will be saved and who won't be saved, because he sees the whole picture. If you can't understand that, think of a book. If you read a book, hopefully everybody in here at one point in time in your life has read a book from cover to cover. And so if anybody asked you, you know exactly what the characters are going to do at the end. You know who the heroine is, who's going to live, who's going to die or whatever, because you know from beginning to end because you read it. And so that's the same thing, uh, a little picture of uh, Synapse of God, just because he was here and he's been here and he will be here. He knows everything that's going on. So again, predestination, we don't believe that God has chosen uh, some and said, ah, later for the rest of them, I got my number, I got my group, you know, just like people on a team will pick some people and the rest, you know, you'll be, you ever been, you know, young when you were younger or you're young now and they're taking a team to play, you know, basketball, oh, I want that person, I want this one. And then they look around and, you know, you're left behind or someone's left behind. So God doesn't do that for the word of God says in John, on 316 for God so loved the world and so then that's everyone in there right God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him and that's the key whomsoever believeth in him shall not perish so that's where it comes to where God knows who's going to choose and accept him and those who will not Amen. All righty. So let's go ahead and get into the lesson on uh, today. And um, our author today is Paul, as we see in verse one, who is uh, was an apostle or a messenger of Jesus Christ. And he tells you who he's the apostle of, who he is serving. He's serving the living Jesus Christ by the will of God. And so that's important too. again, the will of God. Um, because God calls each and every 
one of us at a certain time. Say when you were teenagers, some in your 20s, some in your 30s, some in your 50s, some people on the deathbed. Okay, so God calls. And the point is that when God calls, answer the call with the yes, right? And so when Paul was on the road, as you may know the story, as Paul was on the road to Damascus because he thought, like some people do today, they think they're in a right relationship with God. They're doing good things. They're following the Lord. They're not hurting anybody. They think they're in right relationship with God. And Paul at the same time thought he was in right relationship with God until God met him on the road to Damascus and let him know you're persecuting me, you know? So you may think you're doing um, what's right and what's good in the sight of God, but you won't know if you're in right relationship with God, unless you the word of God and read it and know what God requires of your life. So God called him on his way to uh, uh, road to Damascus to persecute the Christians. But anyway, uh, but when God saved him again, we are no longer looked at in our life how we used to be. You might have used to been an alcoholic, but if you come to Christ, that is no longer a part of your title of who you are. So God called him and he was handpicked just like we were handpicked. And he's writing to the saints. He wrote to the saints at Ephesus. The setting takes place at Ephesus, which is today modern day Turkey. And uh, he wrote this letter to them and also to the faithful in Christ Jesus. And so the word there, saints, is important too, because saints simply means those that are set apart. And a lot of people don't consider their sets as saints. They think saints are the ones in the, you know, who have died and did such wonderful things and they're in this statue or whatever like that. But the word of God, and that's why it's important to know the word of God, what God thinks of you. Okay, and because we have to get the same mindset as Christ. So if we really believe that we're holy, like God wants us to be, then our lifestyle will kind of match up with it. You know, it's like you put on uh, some old clothes or whatever, because you're going out to work in the garden and do some heavy work. You got on your old clothes, right? So you're going to whatever, but you put on your good clothes, right? And you act what? a little differently, right? I'm not going out there to work in my good clothes. And so when you feel, take on the title of who God says you are, then it may help you live that life, okay? So, and, and, and feel like you are. You have to feel like you are. You may um, 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 not feel that you're holy, not feel like you're a saint, not feel like you're worthy. No, we're not worthy, but Jesus, thank God, when we accepted him, made us worthy. So this letter is to us as well. He talks about, uh, again, to the believers. And again, the saints are just those of us who have accepted Jesus Christ as our personal savior. We are set aside for the use of God, for God to use us. So there's neither Jew nor Greek, for we are neither, uh, there's neither bond. The Bible says in Galatians 3 and 28, there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor free female for we are female because we're all one in Christ Jesus. So, so the bottom line identity is found in Christ alone. Okay. And then it goes on to say in Ephesians, again, Ephesians chapter two, eight, for by grace are ye saved through faith. Okay that not of ourselves, nothing we can do. It is a gift from God. Okay. So it's not of works, the Bible says, and that's what people are doing. Some people are doing good works for the church or whatever and feel it's not of works, lest any man should boast. Oh, look what I did. And I, you know, went to church and I cleaned and I did this and I gave to the poor. No, that's good. You did that, but you're not getting into heaven by works. So the grace, Paul says, grace be unto you. So based on and peace, he talked about grace and peace and grace based on God's good desire 
again for us. So again, it's nothing reading. It's a prayer for God's blessing to fall on his people. So it's kind of a, a blessing that Paul is, is placing upon the people of God. And again, letting us know that we're under the umbrella of grace. We are in the dispensation of grace now. And that's why God's mercy, that's why murderers and evil people and things are going on and they're still living because we're under the umbrella of grace. And that's God's unmerited favor, okay? Because again, he does, the Bible says, he doesn't wish that anyone should perish, but that we should so again then father and from the lord jesus christ again at that particular time with the jews jesus christ he wanted them to know that jesus was equal with the father and so he too is worthy of the praise worthy of the praise verse three things blessed be the god of father so jesus taught and emphasized and he mentioned through scripture again about God being our father and so we are to God who has blessed us with all of these spiritual gifts that he talks about in verse 3 with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places so Romans 8 and 28, we, most of us know it by heart, and we know that together, for the good of them that love God, them that are the call according to his purpose. So the blessings of God and everything that God says in the word of God is only for the people of God. <laughs> you know, the blessings, the spiritual blessings are for the people of God. And so we can claim them. And so he talks about heavenly places. And that has to do with the throne room of God, where God is sitting on his throne. So being a part of God's family, again, we experience the blessings in his presence now. Okay. And even though we may go through trials and tribulations and suffering, we yet experience the blessings of God now. We experience the suffering because of the fallen world's condition. So if the road is bumpy and my car I go down there and I get a flat tire because there's glass and things are in there, it's because the road was that way, right? And so we don't blame it on God when we're suffering and that's another story, but we always benefit because the word of God says that all things working together for our good. It may not look good, it may not feel good, but it does. And then he goes on to say in verse four, according as he has chosen us. So God had a plan before the foundation, it says, of the world. We were meant to be holy. We were meant to be blameless before the fall of mankind. God created us that, but because the fall came, sin entered. And so God had a plan and it to call us back to him. And so he wanted to call us back to him and love. And what was his plan to redeem man? Jesus is the plan. <laughs> so Jesus is the only way to the Father. I am the way. Jesus said, I am the way. The, the, I'm the way. The truth and the life, if you didn't hear that. No, no man come to the Father except. Okay, so that's why you need to know the word of God because there is no other way to get to God and have right relationship unless you come through Jesus Christ. Why? Because Jesus is the plan that God had. So Jesus' death, his burial, of course, resurrection conquered sin and death. It led to redemption so that to everyone. Okay, so it's open to everyone. And that's why we don't believe in predestination because it's open to everyone. Because I used to say, well, will I be saved or won't I be saved? You know, and maybe I won't be saved. No, the choice is mine. God gave us each the choice to do it. So we get into 
verse five. And again, if you're just joining us, welcome. Sorry, we're in Ephesians uh, chapter one, verse five. So it says, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children. So God, again, had the plan. Think of adoption, adoption, the act of choosing. So people adopt people on today. It's the act of choosing. So if you're adopted, be happy because you are handpicked. You were chosen. And so God, again, subject, God picked us. We are in the adoption plan of God. Just knowing that God chose us by grace. And again, the choice is yours. Please know you have to make a choice. It's through faith. And that's found in John 1 and 12. Okay. To the praise. So the emphasis. Oh, again, the emphasis is not is on adoption, not predestination. So again, God's plan is through Jesus Christ. And he desires, again, that we all be reconciled to him. Again, 1 John 3 and 1. So our adoption is to the praise, Paul said, to the glory of his grace. So we are fully accepted as children of God. Our adoption makes us heirs. So we're heirs. We have all the rights of heirs. And because if you think of heir, if you've ever been an heir, if you've ever inherited something from your whoever, friends, family members, okay, it's nothing you deserve, they just what willed it to you, right? And so God is giving us all the rights. And so because he's giving us those rights and benefits, we should praise him. That's what Paul said. We should worship him, okay? Because he, in verse seven, he redeemed us. He brought us back. He, oh God, forgave us, as he said, forgiveness of sin. He let the sins go. So when God sees us, he doesn't see what we've done in the past. You know, the enemy may take you back to memory lane, but God is not bringing you back to memory lane because he doesn't remember them no more. He says he throws your sins into the sea of forgetfulness, right? And so he's not going fishing there. You got to know who you are in Christ. You are somebody. That's the thing. You are somebody. You are chosen. We're heirs. We are royalty. We belong to the king of kings and lord of lords. And he's God of the universe. So it's through, again, through the precious blood and death of Jesus Christ. And sin, forgiveness of sin. Sin is just straying away from the path. Okay, the path that God has chosen has chosen for us. So God has a plan and a purpose for our lives, as we know. And Jeremiah 29 and 11, right? And I know the thoughts, most of you know, the plans and the purpose that he has for us. Thoughts of good and not of, okay? So think of you as a parent. Hopefully you got thoughts of good and not of evil. You know, they get on your nerves. I'm not saying that. You know, I wanted to sell my son to the gypsies when he was got to be a teenager, and I would have paid them. You know, take them. I would have paid them. But in the final analysis, when I came to myself, I still wanted him saved, sanctified, filled with the Spirit of God, and working for God. And he shall do that. And you, and you grab hold of that. For your loved ones, because God is faithful and we belong to God and we can ask the Bible says what we want of God. And we expect it to be so. Why? Because that's the will of God. We're praying in the will of God. The will of God is for man to be saved, right? All righty. So he goes on to say, wherefore he had bounded us in wisdom. So God's wisdom, we know God is all wise. He's knowing. He knows what's right and wrong and the choices. He wants us to have the correct thinking, okay? How do we get the correct thinking that God wants us to have? Through the word of God. <laughs> we don't know what God wants unless we read what he said, right? So we can hear what other people say, and I advise you to know for yourself what God said, to read for yourself. Don't just take people's word, don't take my word. 
read for yourself and see <laughs> if the person is saying what the word of God says. All right, so in verse nine, so he, the mystery of his will in verse nine is to give according to his good pleasure. Again, we find that when we read the word of God, then we know what God expects of our life. It's not enough. It's good that you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's step one, I always say, step one. Step two, get in the word and find out what God has for you and all the benefits and the blessings and what he wants. So in that verse 10, that in the dispensation of the fullness of time. So we're talking about appointed time, that at the appointed time, the time arranged by God himself, he's gonna gather everyone together in one in Christ Jesus. So every knee is going to bow at the name of Jesus. Those that believe, those that don't believe, those that worship Buddha, those that worship Muhammad, those that worship whoever you worship in. I'm sorry. The point is there's only one God and I'm on his side. Woohoo! All right. So at this time, according to his will, as people are saved, delivered, brought to Christ, then God's plan is being fulfilled every day. Every time someone gets saved, every time you hold your mouth, every time you don't say, every time you're doing what the word of God says, then his plan is being fulfilled when you help lead people and encourage them to hold on to God, to hold on to him. So again, in verse 11, he's talking about our inheritance. To we obtain an inheritance, being predestined. So our adoption again into the family of God leads us to this great inheritance. We're in the family of God. And so because we're in the family of God, you may not have a natural family, but get in the family of God and you've got brothers and sisters and you got a whole slew. And I never really felt that. I knew that but I never felt that until I came to this church to feel what it means to have a brother or a sister on your side. You know what I mean? And just to have relationship with them because sometimes you just go to church and you say hi and you love the people like that, but you don't fellowship with them and you don't get to know them. And so it's a different kind of feel. But that's another story. But anyway, our adoption into the family of God. God has given us sisters and brothers, mothers and fathers. You know, I got so close to Mother Longmire during the um, during the COVID, and that was a beautiful thing. You know, I'd call her up and we talk and all of that. But that's because of relationship, the family of God, where there's love exists and everything. And so, of course, we receive now blessings naturally. Uh, and there's natural blessings, of course, by being in the word of God, by being in God's family now, of course, as well as spiritual. And we know, and I look and see, and you see on TV, this person got millions, 10 millions for their home, 13 million for their home. And I'm thinking, you know something, what does it all mean? Profit a man, as the Bible says, if you gain the whole world and lose your soul. You miss the boat. If you miss the boat, what good is it to have everything, but you don't have God? Uh-uh. I know, and we know, those who are here today are witnesses, we have eternal life. And the Bible says, and this is eternal life, to know God and Christ who he has sent. So we know him. So we know this isn't it. We're here, we're enjoying it. I'm not saying don't enjoy life, but don't forget what is important. God and being a servant of the living God and being working in the vineyard. So our adoption gives us all of this inheritance, naturally and speaking. All right, and so he goes on to say, after in verse 13, after receiving the gospel of truth, not only do we see blessings, but we are thing. You know, think, just think of a seal on an envelope, you know, like a stamp. That's a seal. Because without that stamp, that your, your letter ain't going too far. It's coming right back, right? But um, they used to have seals in the olden days. But a seal, God is sealing us as his. The Bible says God knows those that are 
You may not think God knows you, but call on him one day and let him talk to you. <laughs> and he knows you. He knows you by name. So Paul is saying after it, he seals us with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit of God, he leads that in our hearts to let us know we belong to him. Okay? We belong to him. And so the last verse has to do with the earnest of our inheritance. It talks about the Holy Spirit is not um, our full inheritance. It's just like a down payment of what's to come. So what's to come, the Bible speaks of eyes have not seen, right? Ears have not heard the good things, right? That God has in store. And again, I'm only talking to the believers today. This is only for the believers. This is not for those who don't accept Jesus Christ. So the down payment, the spirit of God uh, allows us to experience the very presence of God. So when we feel, we feel the actual presence of God and he, he brings he didn't know before that when you feel him, have no doubt, we know that God is real. We don't have to see him. We can feel him. We know he is real. And so we know and feel the presence of God. So now the future inheritance is the defeat, of course, of all sin and its side effects, which is sickness and death and poverty and crime. Those are the effects of sin, okay? Because we live in a fallen world, but we got the victory, amen? In Christ Jesus, we got the victory. And I might look, not look like I got the victory someday. And I might not feel like I got the victory, but I remind myself I got the victory because it's a mind thing. You got to speak to yourself sometime to encourage yourself in the Lord that what God says is true. Okay? So we got to know that the word of God is true. So spiritual, all spiritual fulfillment and completion, we will have eternity with God our Father Jesus Christ and the precious saints of God. And so all of this, again, as he ends it, should lead to the praise and worship of God because he alone is worthy. Only God himself could come up with a plan of salvation. So we rejoice in the plan of salvation. And Paul, as Paul was telling them and telling us today, and we should be led because of this, we should be led to praise and worship God for who he is and for what he's done. Because the bottom line is God picked Amen. Amen. So we thank God for the lesson on today. Amen. We thank God for the lesson on today. There is so much more uh, in the lesson, but we don't have time, of course. Just think of the spiritual blessings this week. I want you to uh, think of the blessings that God, meditate them on the goodness of God, just what he's done in this past year. Never mind going back. You can go back too, because God has done so much for us. I'm sure whereof you'll be glad. But um, just think of the spiritual, encourage yourself in the Lord. Just encourage, if nobody else encourage you, encourage yourself in the Lord <laughs> this week. All righty. And it says to compare the physical and the spirit with the spiritual adoption. Okay. And um, they both have, a, if we had a list and stuff, I would go over and do all of that, but we had no time to make that list to compare adoptions, physical and spiritual, but just know that it's the spiritual adoption that we want. All righty. So next Sunday is November 13th. Our subject will be Christ is wisdom. We'll be in the book of Ephesians again in chapter one, and we'll, we'll be continuing on from this week's lesson. It will start in verse 15 going to 20, 
a three. So um, a point of contact this week uh, and every week uh, is so far as our superintendent, Elder Otis Bryant, and he can be reached at Otis. Any questions or comments, please, we welcome them. Uh, that you can uh, would write and just jot him a little note and we he would appreciate it and we would appreciate some feedback as well. So we wouldn't leave without asking and giving you the opportunity to know our personal savior. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal savior, it's as simple as A, B, C, as we say here. Just A, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal savior. That's found in John 14 and six. B, believe that Jesus died on the cross, was buried, and on the third day, God, the Father, physically raised him from the dead. It's very important to believe that Jesus rose from the dead, because if Jesus did not get up from the dead, then everything that we're doing here today is in vain, okay? But we serve a living God. That's found in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, and and lastly, confess that you're a sinner and that Jesus is Lord. He is the Christ and Savior who alone can save us and forgive us of our sins. And that's found in Romans 3 and 23. So we thank God for that. We're going to uh, end with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your wonderful word on today. We thank you for the spirit of God being with us. We thank you for your redemptive plan. We thank you, God, for handpicking us, for selecting us, oh God, to be a part of the kingdom of God. Oh God, we thank you for our inheritance that we have. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit of God that you left as a seal upon our hearts. And we thank you, God, for our future eternity with you. We thank you for our future inheritance and all that it entails. But Father, while we're here, we pray, God, that you would touch hearts and minds of people, that they may be saved, oh God, that they may come to know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And the truth is that Jesus is the only way to the Father. So Father, bless each and every home represented here again on today. Bless your people according to their needs. We pray that they will be supplied. Remember the sick and the afflicted among us, those that are home, those that are sick and that we know of, the names that are circulating in our hearts and minds. Please remember them today encourage them and let your healing name bless the upcoming service and we say thank god amen there's a praise in the temple let us enter the worship amen god bless